Welcome to this edition of the Times Techies webinar series. My name is Sujit John and I have with me my colleague Shilpa Fadnis. We are technology and business reporters at TOI. The two of us will moderate this, this, this discussion. We hope you and your families are staying safe and doing well. Our hearts go out to those who lost their loved ones battling COVID-19. Our discussion today is on how tech firms in India are navigating the second wave of the pandemic, putting safety and well-being as utmost priority. Tech companies' COVID war rooms are working around the clock. Companies have increased insurance covers, set up COVID helplines, home quarantine facilities, and mental wellness programs for employees and their families. They have activated shadow IT teams and business continuity plans to ensure work does not get disrupted. To discuss this, as also to discuss what more needs to be done by government and stakeholders, we have a very distinguished panel with us this evening. We have Devjani Ghosh. Devjani has been on this platform earlier multiple times. Devjani is the president of NASCOM, the National Association of Software and Services Companies. He has been in that role since April 2018. NASCOM has over 2,800 Indian and multinational member companies. As president of NASCOM, Devjani is responsible for establishing new growth areas for the technology industry in India. Prior to NASCOM, Devjani was with Intel for over 10 years in different roles, the last of which was as MD of India. Devjani was the first woman to lead Intel India. De Welcome, Devjani. We have Thank you. Thanks. We have with us Keshav Murugesh. Keshav is the group CEO of WNS Global Services. He has been with WNS for over 10 years now. It's a company with over 43,000 employees across 16 countries. He's a past chairman of NASCOM. He's also chaired the NASCOM BPO Council for two consecutive terms. Prior to WNS, Keshav was the CEO of Sintel. Welcome, Keshav. Thank you very much. And we have with us uh, CP Gurrani, who's going to join us very soon. CP is the MD and CEO of Tech Mahindra. He has led Tech Mahindra's transformation journey as also one of the biggest turnaround in Indian corporate history, the acquisition and merger of Satyam Computers. In a career spanning over 40 years, CP has held several positions with Hewlett Packard, Perro Systems, and HCL. Uh, welcome, CP, and we will welcome him very soon. So viewing this can send in questions through the Facebook comment box. Shilpa and I will put them to the panelists. Um, to start with, um, Dejani Keshav, uh, give us a sense of the environment and mood in the IT and tech industry. Um, you know, the other day I heard Pramod Basin talking that uh, you know this uh, wave has been very different from the uh, wave last year. A lot more employees and their families have been impacted. So it has impacted work itself and the mood. Uh, Zinov, I just noticed a study that they've done recently where they spoke to a number of the global GICs and all, and they found that about 5 to 20% of the employees have been impacted. Um, so give us a sense. I mean, um, the environment in the tech industry right now. Hey, Jani, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I think, Sujit, this wave has been personal for all of us, right? It's something that has impacted. Uh, pretty much each and every person, whether it is directly or families, and uh, it's it's uh, it's it's frankly at a personal level, I will say this has been a heartbreaking month plus for all of us in India and for India as a whole. As an industry, you know the two things that happened: one, you know we've been an industry that has always stood for resilience that has stood for resilience that has stood for results that has stood for agility etc but the key word for me whenever i thought of this industry was resilience and i think in the last one i mean last one year yes but mainly in the last one odd month um, another word now comes very strongly to mind when I think about this industry and that's empathy. This industry has shown that it is not just about resilience, but it is about tremendous empathy. And, uh, you know, just, we just finished a survey of 250 plus companies to understand what have been some of the changes, what has been the impact and uh, if you look at the companies, which are the large companies with 5,000 plus say, employees, uh, first and second CEO priority is employee health and safety and employee engagement. You know, third 
is business operations, the jointly business operations and cybersecurity. So it's, it's very interesting to see how this is played out because usually in a crisis, it's, it's employee and it's business, both go hand in hand. And in the past, we have seen both were the top priorities. But this time around, it was very clear, employee first, it's about saving employees, it's about saving employee families. And if we keep our employees well, then as an industry, we will survive and we will grow strong. And I think that you talked about impact, we looked at the impact across. And I think, uh, you know, in March 21, so they just one month before the wave, we did a survey to see how many companies were actually uh, do uh, you know how many employees were doing remote work? And we found that around 80% or 83% of the organizations say that they had 90% workforce working from home or working remotely. One month later, when the third wave, when the second wave started, we did the same, we went back and asked the same question. 98% of the companies said that they had over 90% of employees working from home, you know? And I think our ability to quickly change the business models, move to remote work, and then provide the support that we have been providing on quarantine, vaccination, mental health, et cetera, et cetera, has not just helped employees, but it has also definitely helped our customers and it has helped business. You talked about impact. If you look at the large firms over 5,000 as part of this survey, 80% said that uh, the impact, workforce impact was less than 3%. 98% um, said that the productivity impact was again one to 3%. And 90% said that there was no impact on business for the remaining 10%, the impact was around one to 3%, right? And this, this survey is just concluded. So it was after a month of the, of the first wave. Yes, the impact does increase when you talk to smaller companies. When you talk to smaller companies, around 40% said that, you know, three to 5% of the workforce were impacted around 10% said that 5%, 5 to 10% of the workforce were impacted, but these are companies with less than 1000 employees, right? So we definitely saw the impact in smaller companies, but as far as the mid to larger companies, which account for 90 plus percent of the IT industry revenue, et cetera, uh, the impact has been absolutely minimal. And I do believe that that has happened for two reasons. One, our ability to remote work has definitely helped save lives. It has definitely helped employees. And two, maybe Keshav will talk more about it. We have also seen tremendous empathy from our customers. Company after company has told me stories of how our customers have reached out to help and, um, you know, just shown that they care. And I think it's the crisis which, which actually brings these qualities out so wonderfully in people. And, and they have shown empathy because they believe in us, because they trust us, because they have seen that despite everything, we are not impact letting our productivity business go down. So, you know, I have all fingers crossed because this crisis is just such a tragedy and, uh, you know, you never know how it's gonna play out next. But at least as of now, I think the focus on employee well-being has definitely served us well. Hey, okay, Keshav, you want to add to that? I think uh, Devjani has given a wonderful overview already, Sujit. So I won't add significantly to anything that she has said. I, I agree vehemently with what she has said. What I will say, however, is that there's a lot of confidence in terms of India and the industry that we are seeing from clients. I think we have once again demonstrated through this pandemic that what the world wants tomorrow, we from the tech side are able to see and deliver today, right? And therefore the entire 2020 
while you know uh, we we demonstrated how beautifully we moved from a work from office environment to a you know work from anywhere kind of environment devjani and nascom made sure that you know from because of the collaboration that the industry had with government they helped to relax a number of uh, you know complex laws to make sure that on a permanent basis also we could be looking at some of these models and i think the comfort that customers have now got around the fact that we managed the health and safety of our employees so well we managed uh, you know the the whole environment of operational and cyber risk and in an in an environment where something had never been tested before we moved so admirably as an industry is has given a lot of comfort so if you look at you know generally the pronouncements coming from companies look when we went into 2020 most of us had to pull guidance right because if the clients were not able to project what what was the state of their business how would we provide guidance but if you look at you know what we did across the quarters last year we kept giving firmer and firmer guidances and this year for you know the the next fiscal that we are all sitting in today most of us have actually gone back to normal guidances from a revenue and a profitability point of view you know and that is that actually says a lot because we know that the pandemic is still ongoing we know that the lessons that have been learned from wave 1 during 2020 you know will now help us in terms of wave 2 and frankly speaking if you look at some of the initiatives we are driving as an industry and a lot with the help of government and nascom is to make sure that we are preparing for the next level of waves we are giving a lot of comfort to our employees our clients all our stakeholders and i think the one big change that has happened in the industry is that whereas even 2 years ago most people chose a company for the experience or the breadth of experience they would get in a company today i will say that that has changed forever today they will choose companies who show them that they care for them first so i mean when you started you spoke about a lot of initiatives that we have done from an insurance point of view from a healthcare point of view from a mental health point of view from a reach out point of view from a home care point of view now these are the kind of companies we would want our children to go and work in because that comes first it it clearly lays out what uh, devjani said that empathy is leading in terms of you know the key initiative and personally for me i think you know i want to uh, talk about the excellent handshake we have seen between industry government and people on all fronts our people people generally in the community around us and i call this anagram the rise of indian it and rise actually stands for you know resilience as devjan report it talks it, it it is intellect it is scale and it is entrepreneurial skills we'll talk a little about all of that but i think this is going to be the big change that we are going to see which will actually enable uh, indian it to grow even faster even better and build even more credibility in the world markets okay thanks kesha uh, cp has also joined us um, can we speak where did he, uh, he had joined where did he go <laughs> there he is yeah Yeah, I think he's joining. CP, you there? We can't see you. I can hear you. I can hear you, madam. Ah, <laughs> uh, for Devjani, we can we can see you like uh, crystal clear. Yeah, we can't see you. We can't see you, but you but we can hear <laughs> you, crystal. I'm trying to. Hey, Shilpa, how are you? Good, sir. Ah, there, there you is. are. Yes, yeah, CP. But little okay. children should be seen, not heard. <laughs> Could you? Where are you? You are in UK today. Yeah, I'm crisscrossing right now. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> so, uh, CP, we are just talking about. Um, of course, the second wave has been very different from the first. Um, more people impacted and all of that. But um, they, Daniel and Kesha, were saying that uh, the industry also. shifted focus in a big way um the surveys that nascom has done um show that ceos and, and cxos generally are prioritizing employee safety and health and prioritizing employee engagement 
and business operations and cyber security are actually the number three um, in, in, in the survey. So in, in some ways, the industry has responded very well to the kind of uh, impact that the second wave had. What, what is your sense? I mean, it's coincidental that Shilpa and I spoke to each other just a few days, a few days ago, exactly on the same subject. And, uh, you know, when I look at industry perspective, it's very, very clear that uh, all of us, almost without being in the same room, were able to function like an orchestra. Uh, people in Gurugram, uh, got together and set up this uh, isolation center with one of the hotels called Sarovar Hotel. Uh, uh, Like-minded people, most of us, 99% from IT got together and we actually have Trehan as, Dr. Trehan as part of that group, which is basically talking about how to increase vaccination in India. We are not talking only about IT. 99% of us from IT sector, and Trehan is one of that 1% outsider. And uh, the discussion is more about how to increase vaccination in India, because that's a long-term solution to wave two, wave three, wave four, whatever you want to call it. Right, similarly, all of us in our own way responding, uh, as you know, this was literally a wave started you know, from Bombay. And I was joking with Shilpa the other day, Sujit, that uh, the way I understood uh, the intensity of the problem was the number of phone calls I used to get from a city uh, to help and get a bed. And to the extent is, Sangeeta Reddy stopped taking my phone calls. And we became more... Uh, uh, text message friends. Uh, I mean, and we lost our captain also for uh, eight days. Uh, she was also comfortable in Narayana Hirzalai. What was that place, Devjani, where you landed us? No, no, I was at home, mother. Uh, mom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so anyway, I was just making a point here is that now, what does this, uh, and internally on our group, how did we function? We function really because of a chatter with each other on emails and WhatsApp groups, where Keshav took the lead of saying, I want to bring in oxygen in Mumbai. I can't create beds. I mean, I'm just sharing the chatter on that group that we cannot create beds overnight. We cannot create ICUs overnight, we cannot create ventilators overnight, but we can definitely provide oxygen. So he took the lead on the oxygen. And then there were 10 other companies which were collaborating together to provide oxygen in Mumbai and Pune. Similarly, around the same time, as I said, the barometer was more about the phone calls you started getting about the beds. And I said, no, we have to provide so we converted all our cafeterias into isolation centers with oxygen. We obviously tied up with the hospital. Uh, but where we worked as an orchestra was, NASCOM was you know, making sure that we don't have problems with the district magistrates. We don't have problem with the state government because at the end of the day, we are all in uh, export promotion zones. Uh, similarly, the medium term, for example, Tech Mahindra said we are going to go ahead and use all our CSR money towards setting up like oxygen plants on a medium term basis uh, with the hospitals, which are either in government sector or are the charitable hospitals, basically people who need money. Uh, now, the point we are trying to make out here is yes, for the wave two, uh, Wave one was all about getting ready. And trust me, that was all about getting the logistics ready. Uh, for example, in Tech Mahendra, and uh, I was joking with Devjani when all of this was going on. I mean, the, the ordinary cop on the streets of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to name the city, 
but the ordinary cop would stop a guy out there and he said ye computer leke kahan ja raha hai i mean and uh, uh, because that was supposed to be the curfew luckily this time it was a even when there is a lockdown uh, the government has learned its lesson that it cannot be a curfew that time i have had reports of various companies engineers actually been beaten up by a lathi because they were trying to move from office to a home a lot of our energy actually went into being responsive to the client being responsive in setting up desks at the employees homes and being able to battle with the government telecom authorities to make sure that the laws are suitably amended and it is not only in india there are certain countries which uh, their own data protection laws were not so simple whereas this time the focus is purely on employee safety purely on societal measures for the employees and in a lot of ways taking a view that vaccination is that will be a differentiator for india uh, and we need to provide vaccination okay okay in fact uh, that's one of the questions that we just got and i, I don't know whether this is true or not yet but uh, the question uh, this person called rakesh k asking now that the center has allowed private entities to procure vaccines on their own will large it employers like tech mahindra look at purchasing vaccines directly from the source because of their scale uh, uh, so you know again uh, uh, is it okay if i go ahead keshav and uh, yeah it's it's for you i think cp so again this is nascom took a view on this so we took three three uh, potential uh, uh, views on this number one can we give a demand to the local manufacturers about Uh, what some of our member companies would like to pool together so we gave the demand to both uh, serum institute and bharat uh, biotech at one point of time and obviously we will have the same discussion with mr dr prasad and satish reddy of reddy labs and similarly with pankaj and kadila uh, you know as we keep going uh, however the government laws at that point of time as i said there were it was a three pronged approach government laws at that point of time did not encourage private sector to directly engage with the uh, institutions and institutions told us a very nicely drafted letter that we will wait for the guidelines and when the guidelines are available we will encourage you now meanwhile companies all over uh, wipro set up vaccination drives uh, above 45 in their own campuses tech mahindra yesterday did a vaccination drive uh, for 18 to 45 i mean more than 76% of my employees over 45 in tech mahindra have already been vaccinated because of the vaccination drives uh, even there the local laws were different like in gurgaon uh, the the hospital is willing to move into your campus and do it uh, till yesterday noida was not allowing it yesterday means till last week uh, so we were able to figure out how to uh, you know work with the local government how to work with the state government how to work with the local hospitals but it is more or less i would say is above 45 has been addressed uh, average age of the industry being 27 28 i think there's a long way to go uh, for the vaccination drives to happen but most companies have taken initiatives uh, like i told you yesterday with fortis noida we covered uh, day 1 all my support staff contractor staff uh, 100% of them and we took that as day one a we wanted to set an example that we care for the community and number two then we covered that today was day 3 and till day 3 i mean it's been a very very good response 
Okay. So, so Sujit, I'll just give a little flavor. You know, every every company, big or small, Indian or MNC in India, is signing up um, with with hospitals, etc., to drive vaccination programs. I think every tech company has come out with its plan, um, and most of them are even paying for the vaccines. Right. So, so that is definitely happening. Um, while yes. The government has said you can directly procure. The problem is that there is no supply of it. So, you know, we can go and talk to everyone we want to, but there is very limited supply available right now. Um, and and uh, most of the international, the big manufacturers have indicated that given the challenge, their first preference is to work with government rather than industry. So they meet the needs of the country rather than having a fragmented approach where you know 500 different companies etc are talking to them so so right now our approach is uh, whoever has access to vaccines it doesn't matter whoever has it can be a hospital it can be um, a manufacturer but whoever has access to approved you know vaccines that have been approved by who or fda and allowed in india we are willing to do work with them to get the vaccines to um, um, you know as many companies as possible. In fact, another fantastic thing that's happening: some of the large companies who are in direct conversation with vaccine manufacturers are reaching out to me to say that, "Hey, I'm talking to so and so, and my need is say hundred thousand or five hundred thousand, but I'm willing to order more, so you can use it now for other companies." You know, and and this is this is the spirit of the IT industry. Whenever we have we face with any big challenge, I think it's in our nature to start helping each other and collaborating, and that's becoming that's just just so obvious right now with what's going on. So so yes, in fact, uh, even um, we are in talks with other associations like CII. Uh, CII has been looking at procuring some vaccines, so we are working with them to ensure that the IT industry is able to uh, get what they need via that process. So, you know, we are happy to work with anyone who has access and who can get us vaccines. I think as an industry, we only have one priority, which is to vaccinate not just all our employees, but their families and as much of the community as we can, because only then can we can we say that you know we are truly prepared? I just want to add one point here. I think both CP and Devjani have clearly articulated how important testing, tracing, vaccination is for the industry. So, you know, we I think the viewers should be very comfortable about the fact that this is something happening across the entire industry, and that's giving a lot of comfort even to our clients because ultimately, you know, this all has to relate to where the business will will head. But I must also say that not every company uh, will be a large company and will have a campus in yeah. order to be able to actually drive a vaccination program in the campus. So many of us you know, are also doing a blended approach where we feel that tying up with the hospital chains that actually have access to the uh, doses is a much more efficient manner you know, for some of us. And uh, you will see that the smaller companies, SMEs are all going with that model where they're telling their employees that if you are more comfortable getting it done, you know, in reserved slots in a hospital near to your home, go get it done, we'll reimburse you. Or if you're comfortable coming to the office where, you know, the uh, provider is available, that cost is anyway taken care of. So we're making it as convenient as is possible for the employee and the entire extended kind of, uh, you know, family to ensure actually, that the vaccination is done. Actually, Keshav is not just small companies, but even for our large companies, because 98% of our employees are working from home. Yeah, that's and it. home in this context means some small city somewhere. In fact, most of our employees are back in their hometown. And these are small, you know, some of them are in villages, some of them are in tier two, tier three cities. So the campus approach only works for people who are still in the city. So pretty much a lot of our companies are tying up with hospital chains, especially to address tier two, tier three cities, uh, where a large number of our employees are. Yeah, many have moved to hometowns. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Shilpa? Yeah, Kishan, uh, in keeping up with the spirit of what Devjani just described, so, uh, you know, the power of community. You have spearheaded a special project in Maharashtra with BMC, with other technology companies and stakeholders in trying to secure oxygen among several things. So if you can talk about that initiative and how you all come together to in these unprecedented times. Yeah, Shilpa, so first I will start by saying that, you know, we have to appreciate the effort that the government is making on the ground, you know, both centrally as well as in each of the states that we operate in, it's a mammoth problem. And, you know, quite often we sometimes forget uh, to appreciate the kind of work that is being done, uh, particularly with the scale of the problem can never be planned for in, a, in any BCP setting. So first thing I'll say is that, and, you know, as CP also said, we all said that, you know, if we can all work together in this fashion, I mean, you can, I'm sure, I'm, I hope you can see the camaraderie in this discussion itself. And this extends beyond. I think the wonderful thing about the Indian tech industry is NASCOM. And the fact that NASCOM actually ensures that all of us stay connected at some level, though we may all compete in the marketplace vehemently. And the beauty is now we have Devjani as president, you know, who's high energy, driving things with the government, driving things all over. So our relationships with governments at center and state levels are much stronger, right? At the same time, this organization also has two former presidents who are part of this organization still, who don't get paid any salary, who are still giving advice. I mean, CP is a former chair himself, and there are many of us. So what we said is, why can't we, you know, then start forming, uh, you know, focus groups in specific areas and have one leader take the leadership there. And that is how we started this initiative in Maharashtra. We found that the need to bring the three branches together, uh, you know, the municipal corporation, the, uh, the administration, as well as police, right, was very, very powerful because it was, they, it was needed. And quite often, they all don't really interact closely with each other. But through this initiative, actually, all of them are interacting very closely with each other. We then, you know, took the uh, NASCOM platform. We invited all the companies from NASCOM to get in, get involved in it. We have now extended beyond. In fact, there are many other companies, you know, who are involved. And the focus there is to make sure that uh, we are focused on the here and now for the next two or three months, which is oxygen concentrators, uh, oxygen plants, portable plants, you know, ventilators, things like that. And also remote management of ICUs. That's a very important area because it is not only about the big cities like Gurugram or Delhi or Bombay. This, the big problem actually lies in the districts outside where there is not much support. So one of the things we're also driving here is having various companies take ownership of ICU beds in Bead district, Satara district, Amravati district, whatever. And then from a central monitoring hub, you know, doctors highly qualified here are providing uh, student doctors on the other side information or advice on how to manage, you know, patients and things like that. Uh, so that's what we have done. And I must say that the support on the ground has been outstanding. So, you know, we've even had companies like, uh, you know, pharma companies like Bayer and banks, you know, get involved in this. Uh, a lot of the material that we ordered over the past two weeks or so are starting to get delivered now. And I think this initiative is being appreciated a lot. So the most important thing I will say here is that uh, I hope people realize that this industry is not just focused on its own people or its own customers or its own you know, kind of ecosystem. We are very much concerned about the community that we also work with and we're doing our very best. Uh, you know, to, to deliver to them. And the other thing I will say is rather than putting money out, we actually said we, act, we want each of you to contribute specific things. I can give you a long lecture if you like on, on oxygen plants at this point in time, because I've spent so much of time in that. And there are others in this group who have spent time on ventilators. They, they can take a class on ventilators. But that's the beauty of, you know, I think this group, and I think it's, uh, it's working well. well I want to give an example, real example. Uh, we imported with one of the NGOs, you know, oxygen on wheels, oxygen for India, 2,500 cylinders. Now, very, we are all very smart people. Uh, 
the consignment lands in Chennai, we don't know how to clear it. Who helps us? Another member company in Chennai, NASCOM, they're not related to this, but they have had some experience because that's how the group works for you. Then you also realize that you need some kind of a license. I mean, all of this is happening in real time. Something called a petroleum and explosive, something storage license. Uh, again, some other company educates us that, listen, you need to go to this, this ministry, this, this, but everything happened in real time. And where I want to salute is the government also working in real time. Uh, the government gives a clearance in real time. Now the last level of what is called ignorance. Now the wall that we used in India, the flow regulator, is uh, different than uh, this guy, the cylinder that we brought. Now overnight, another company is helping me uh, redesign the regulator also. So I can only tell you is that when I use the analogy of an orchestra, but a distributed orchestra, I have seen it in action, including government, including mechanical designers for the flow regulator and for getting a license and getting a transportation organized. No, wonderful work. Um, no, absolutely. I mean, and the number of uh, so many companies reaching out to us to tell, tell us the kind of stories that they are, the kind of thing that they are doing. Uh, a slightly different point. I mean, I heard this a few days ago from somebody who said, you know, we have such a fantastic IT industry and all of that. We talk AI all the time. Um, can, isn't there any effort to try and predict the next wave? Is, is there anything that as an industry that or any company that's doing that you know of um, that can give us a better foresight into, you know, what might happen in the future and how we should be preparing ourselves? So, Sujit, I'm going to take this and I'm sure Devjani will chime in. Uh, the reality is it is a classical demand forecasting modeling. Now, why am I using the word demand forecasting? Well, there's no point in trying to treat it as a pandemic forecasting modeling. It is more of about saying that there is a pattern out here we are all experts on data analytics and AI. So what we have proposed to the government is, that is Tech Mahindra has currently proposed uh, to the government is that we know that IIT Kanpur has done it and Professor Mahindra Agarwal is, you know, his model has obviously been well discussed and talked. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, Professor Vijay Raghavan, PSA, his team has done it for the government. But we are also making an attempt to do that model. Now, why am I calling it a four box theorem is, one is that for every technology, there has to be a tool set. Let's assume the tool set is coming from not an Indian company. Let's assume it comes from an overseas company. Now that overseas company, we have a data regulation acts in India uh, and we have to respect not only that data regulation act, but we also have to make sure that the overseas company respects it. So we say box A, you only provide the tool. Box B, a company like Tech Mahindra optimizes it, but the tool comes here, but the data is not going to go out from there. Then the box three is where I say, listen, I've now simulated it. You put a variable out here, number of testing in a day, uh, the, the social gatherings in a particular environment, the number of people that will actually follow, da, 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 da. There are obviously 30 parameters which will help you demand forecast. Now, we would have simulated it with the tool. So Tech Mahindra here becomes a box two. Box three, is where we have gone to the government and said, we believe a you know, Ministry of IT or NIC, National Informatics Center, we don't want data directly to come to us. We wanted data for simulation. Now for a box three, you have now got complete data and I'm assuming government will allow NIC to do it because NIC has got data centers also. 
they can create cloud compute for the country. All three boxes are separate boxes. They are, you know, using the same tool set, but they're not flowing back. Box four is where I say that ultimately the data is to be used. How many ambulances a district will need to upgrade a healthcare system? How many gas crematoriums or burial grounds or electric crematoriums will need? And how much medicine we are likely to need? When you, when you talk to Dr. Devi Shetty, he says he monitors his ICU not only for COVID. It, it, he is able to tell us which doctor is using which antibiotic and who has got a tendency to prescribe more antibiotics. Now, this is Devi Shetty, who is a doctor. He uses technology to monitor his hospital and his ICU. So my point is that the box four is the real output, which is demand forecast now being converted into an action plan, which I believe is an execution agency, whether it is a state or a center or a uh, union territory. I think we will be ready to, uh, you know, uh, work on this. Uh, ultimately, uh, I'm conscious that we are not the only guys who are proposing this. Uh, different formats, uh, different people would have uh, different solutions, but uh, trust me, we are conscious that you cannot create uh, more ICU beds uh, but you can definitely create, you know, work backwards from a demand and make the wave three a better tackleable problem. Okay. Yeah, I'll just Come add on. one thing to it, uh, Sujay. Uh, see, the technology to create these predictive models is not the problem. So many companies have it. They can all bring it to table. They can all create models. The problem we have in India is access to data. Data. Where is the data? Because if CP comes out with a brilliant model, but he does, uh, he has access to pathetic data, it's rubbish in, rubbish out. You know, that's, that's how models work. So access to data becomes extremely important. And that's one of the reasons Transcom has been shouting from rooftops that India must have a data strategy. You know, it must have a data utilization strategy. We have to full figure out the key verticals that we want to prioritize and build out end-to-end -end data utilization strategy from collection to storage to quality to sharing to uh, ethical use, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's extremely important. And that's the one of the biggest challenges we have. And the second challenge we have in India is that whatever data you can still get, is fragmented. India has a silo approach. So most of the departments do not talk to each other. Now, you know, we've all seen the Maharashtra case study. And I think in, to, to me, the secret sauce in that case study is the fact that he was able to connect the dots and get everyone to talk to each other and get data to flow across. That was the secret sauce. But most of the times, health will not talk to IT and so and so and so and so. So what you get is very fragmented data points, which again does not help you. So I don't think creating a model or coming up with the model is the problem. The problem. Mm -hmm. um, it is figuring out how to get access to quality data, how to ensure that uh, uh, you, you have a connected approach versus mm -hmm. a fragmented mm -hmm. approach because data is one thing. Even when you get the insights, who acts on it? Who's going to actually take the insights and say, okay, this is what we change? Whose neck is on the block? Who's, who's going to be responsible? I think these are things that have to be also thought through. It's, you can come up with thousands of models, but these but are the things exists. that has to be thought Data exists, you think? Um, um, yes, is, is of that... course data exists, but I don't know in what form, what quality... Okay. Um, who has access. I think these are things that we have to resolve. We have to have data protocols in India to ensure quality, to ensure sharing, to ensure security, et cetera, et cetera. 
Okay. You know, I'll okay. say where data exists and there's a good team managing the data and, you know, um, uh, monitoring it, then already actions for a next wave are being planned. So if you look, for example, in Maharashtra, they're already building pediatric beds. They're already planning for the big order of, you know, vaccines. They're already planning for, you know, what medicines are likely to be required, you know, next. You know, things like that. So when you actually interact with these people, you realize that, you know, and, and okay, a lot of it may be, you know, Mumbai focused. Now, how much of it is, has gone outside into the districts has to be also looked at. But the reality is, if you look at the action on the ground, it is all around using this information that Devjani and CP, you know, talked about and starting to prepare, you know, new beds, new capacities. And everyone is now talking about the, you know, the, the new pediatric, uh, you know, sickness because they say a virus starts at the top and goes to the bottom, and that's how it spreads. So everyone's already doing that. So it's it's very interesting to see how certain states are moving faster than the others. But I think everyone will catch up. Okay. Most states, most states. I mean, at least we are in touch with a few states. Most states are taking into account that the district hospitals need to become a lot better. Remote health monitoring has to become a lot better and number three that uh, there will be a shortage of health workers so for example take mahindra foundation uh, you know runs health academies where we train paramedics we train ward boys we train x-ray technicians as a part of our csr initiatives and we do it in Pune, Mumbai, Delhi, Chandigarh, I mean, about seven centers around the country. Uh, we've been asked to double, triple the capacity uh, because there are some states which are taking a aggressive view that uh, even if the training is for three months, uh, please remember, I mean, I, you know, Sujit, I was joking with somebody that people have all asked question to IT industry oh, you know, this pandemic, will it hurt your business? I said, listen, I don't worry about that at all. I worry about, is this pandemic going to hurt the hospitals? Because the number of the doctors or the nurses or the paramedics getting impacted because they are the, the night angles. They are the ones who are needed. So every time I used to read a newspaper and, uh, you know, where... Uh, there is a casualty. My actually heart goes out is because a Dr. K.K. Agarwal was an angel to thousands of the people. So I think, I mean, uh, all the reason I'm bringing the story is uh, now I have seen government engaging about training health workers also. Okay. Okay. Shilpa? Uh, we have this question from Lakshmi Prasanna. Did the industry an anticipate the devastating impact of the second wave after looking at the first wave in India and the examples from the Western world? Again, I'm taking a lead here and I'll let Keshav come in. Uh, you know, the reality is uh, most of us are traders in hope and dreams. And, uh, you know, when January 21st, 300K cases in US, we were worried about our customers. We were worried about our family. We were worried about our employees in US. You know, not realizing that India is 1.3 billion people. And uh, come April, uh, you know, those 300 cases can come and hit us. Uh, we were lucky. I mean, I honestly, when I look back, if January US was 300K cases and we reached only 400K plus cases in India, we were lucky. Uh, were we prepared or were we taken unaware? I think we were pretty much taken unaware, but many of us reacted in real time a lot faster. As, as you can see it on the Twitter handle, uh, companies, whether it is Wipro, Infosys, Genpak, uh, WNS, Tech Mahindra, around the first week of April, 
We were proactively engaging with the government, with our employees, with the hospitals, setting up these, uh, uh, you know, hospitals in our campuses. It only shows is the resilience of companies like Tech Mahindra and NASCOM was little better and faster. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. In fact, I'll say the only difference between wave one and wave two really is the situation of oxygen, right? And, and from an industry point of view, we have been extremely well prepared. Actually, we used wave one to keep improving our processes, systems, our proctoring solutions, our cybersecurity solutions, things like that. Plus, I think as an industry, we over communicated with our employees and our clients. Uh, and built a lot of comfort with them around the fact that we are prepared. Now, we didn't know that the wave, second wave will be like this. But I can tell you, for example, at WNS, when I announced results early April for the March ended year, I spoke about 21% uh, globally being in the office. And a few weeks later, we are down to 8%. Right? So the ability, if you ask me, of the industry to pivot very quickly around a model that we have now got used to, our people have got used to, our customers are happy to accept is, uh, is, is, is very, very positive. You know, Shilpa, right in the beginning, I gave you the, the numbers, the data on impact, right? And for large companies, the impact has been less than 2% from a workforce perspective. And the simple reason for that is we did not get complacent after wave one. Um, we did not bring all employees back to work like a lot of other verticals uh, you know, did. So yes, from 98%, maybe we went down to around 90%. But we still had around 88 to 90% of our employees working from home, right? And within a week of when it started going up, Within a week, we had moved back to 98%. Within a week, our companies had set up isolation centers, quarantine centers, testing facilities, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody was focused on vaccine procurement. Uh, so I think the response, and you know, this is the other thing that this industry to me really stands for is also agility. The response time was so quick uh, that I, I honestly believe that our ability to act so fast would have definitely saved lives and thank God for that. Yeah. Okay, this is a question, related question in some ways. Um, uh, I know some of you have answered it in some ways. About Monica Chaudhary asking, um, given the number of employees who are impacted in these companies, uh, how is the industry managing business continuity, especially in mission critical projects? Um, I mean, one of you, I think they only said that there's a lot of empathy from customers themselves that they understand the situation in India and, that they are, and therefore are very open to the way you're dealing with it. So something See, so more we want to add to it. Productivity has not still not been impacted, right? And that's what we have to keep in mind. And this is data. This is not just me saying, you know, productivity, but this is data that proves that industry productivity has been impacted less than 2%. Um, and I have all fingers crossed. I don't want to jinx it. I hope it doesn't uh, get any worse, uh, but only improves. Um, and and that the reason is because we had invested a lot in building a very robust remote working model in wave one. If you remember in wave one, one of the biggest investments our companies made was cybersecurity. Why? Because we wanted to ensure that we can build a secure remote working model where our customers will be okay with people working from home and will know that their work or their data is going to be safe. And those things have started, I think, paying off. So uh, in fact, uh, just yesterday, I was in talk with a few of the other CEOs, and they were telling me that this time round, in wave one, a lot of customers were still insisting that we want essential workers in office. They were saying this time round, the customers were saying, no, it's okay. 100% can be from home. So yes, it was. it's definitely the empathy helped, but it's not just the empathy. It's also the preparedness of the industry. Uh, Keshav, you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to make one uh, observation. You know, we predicted that the West will come back faster. 
six months ago, we felt that we felt that the vaccination drives would go, you know, faster in the West. North America will come back faster. The UK will come back faster. And therefore, from a demand momentum point of view, we felt that clients would want to start actually interacting and meeting with their teams at some stage. You know, in many conversations now, already people are saying, you know, when can I fly down to India or when can you come across things like that? So that is, uh, and, and, there, and there, because of the fact that we are still vaccinating, there's a little bit of lag. And therefore, the comfort that we have built as an industry with clients, while you know, we, we really uh, navigate this lag, is actually helping us to you know, keep them away uh, and, and help them uh, you know, appreciate that they don't need to come here in a hurry and that you know, things are absolutely uh, you know, safe from a work point of view. So that's the first thing. Second thing is on, you know, you know, what you said about resiliency, uh, Shilpa, the great thing about this industry is the way we manage our HR processes. So I think I take great pride in saying that, you know, in this particular way, uh, if one person gets sick, you will actually see that the whole family has actually got infected, as opposed to wave one. That's what most doctors are saying. And therefore, all of us have experienced that, you know, in our companies. And from a client's point of view, I think they are very happy that we have such strong and robust HR processes that we are able to very quickly bring in the next level of leadership to take charge when somebody is out of action for that 14 day period. See, these are the important things that customers value, right? That, you know, we are immediately able to bring an, another team in or another leader in and, and therefore the scalability of uh, the industry and the respect for our processes actually has gone up even higher. Yeah, Tech Mahindra CP, you guys announced an employee wellness manager or, or head today, which I think really? is going to be the norm across the company. No, I'll put it very differently, Sujit uh, and Shilpa. Statistically, I think both Devjani and Kesha have proven to you that if it is 2% absenteeism or 3% absenteeism, every industry has got resilience to, you know, continue to deliver. I think the biggest factor that has worked to the advantage of the industry is in India, not only many of our customers, while they work with us, they also have their own global development centers in India. And in a way, NASCOM becomes that adhesive, that glue, which puts the global delivery. So for example, Devjani came from Intel. Intel is my client, but Intel also has its one of their largest facilities in the world in India. Now, today, Intel, Tech Mahindra, and maybe three other people who supply to Intel would be getting together to say, how do we serve an employee or employee's family? And not only this, we have to also take into account is that many people who are overseas, they have families here in India. So this softer aspect of being one large family, being able to communicate with each other and being able to rally together, I think is the real uh, beneficiary uh, of wave two because it has actually brought a client global delivery centers, uh, the local company, the overseas company, the, and uh, some of us, all of us together. So we are no longer, there are lot, lots of companies that are, we work with, we do actually a common fundraise because they want to participate in that fundraise. Okay. Okay. Now, I keep telling everybody, I mean, uh, tech industries, HR is really the gold standard in India without a, without question. Uh, Shilpa, any questions? Yes, we had a question from Kaushik Ghosh. Will the IT industry ever return to a 100% office model? No. <laughs> no. It's never going to happen. <laughs> I think the future is not just hybrid, but the future also is about choices. It's about having the flexibility of choice, but 100% doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay, we are out of time. You know, any 
my last message to the government anything that you want anybody else government or any other stakeholder that you want them to do something that will help the situation devjani you can see that <laughs> they left it to you devjani okay i mean my message or my request is very simple we have to vaccinate 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 as fast as possible as many as possible uh given the sheer size and complexities of india just asking the government to bear that entire responsibility on its shoulder is not right it's not even feasible i think this is where the public private partnership model has to come into play and we are more than willing to do our best to help so i think this is where we have to come together and really figure out a vaccination strategy for all of india okay okay thanks a lot um, devjani cp keshav great discussion um, i know you all of you are doing wonderful work uh, and the way the industry responded to employees uh, is uh, really a case study uh, so thanks once again uh, from shilpa and me and from the times of india thank, thank you very much thank you shilpa thank you stay safe stay well please and take keshav, care don't party too much 